don't need any more evidence of the scale of this crisis. So the, the response has to be commensurate to that. You've been very kind having me on, I think, on this programme since January of this year, making the case for a windfall tax on North Sea oil and gas producers, who would still do very well, by the way, but we would use some of the windfall accrued by record oil and gas prices for the benefit of the economy as a whole, for businesses and for households. Now, we've been making that case since January. Clearly, the crisis has only got worse in that time. So we're going to continue to make arguments and interventions that respond to the scale of this. We'll be saying specifically more about the cap next week. But I can, yes, tell you today that part of the response would be we would end the practice where people who buy their energy in advance through prepayment meters are charged more than those people who pay by direct debit. There's around about a 2% additional premium for those people. That's 4 million households paying uh, substantially more for their, oil, uh, for, sorry, for, their, for their domestic electricity and gas. And by changing that, those people, those 4 million households, would save around about £200 between now and March next year. So add that to the intervention around warm homes discount and taking VAT off energy bills. You're starting to get to the scale of the response required. More is required. I do accept that. But that's part of the response. We're going to continue to say this. But there's no more evidence required. Households and businesses need help to get through this energy crisis. Mr Reynolds, I'm hoping you could clear up uh, Sir Keir Starmer's stance um, on nationalisation because in the uh, Labour leadership debates in 2020, he actually raised his hand saying he wanted to nationalise energy and water companies, uh, but now he's saying he doesn't. He appears to have changed his stance. Well, the big thing that has changed between that leadership contest and the situation today is clearly that this country took on substantial amounts of debt, quite rightly, as part of the response to the pandemic for giving people support they needed to get through that. Now, that was the right thing to do, but there are limits. When you bring uh, any public entity into public ownership, you have to add the costs of doing so to the public sector net debt, but you also have to add the cost of the liabilities for that entity onto the same balance sheet. So, frankly, there is less scope for manoeuvre because of the pandemic. That's just the reality and there's no point saying there aren't priorities, there aren't, there aren't challenges that come out of that. If you look at the big calls that Keir Starmer has made, particularly on increasing public investment in energy, you know, those are choices that have to be made. You can't do everything. And I think he has a right to make those choices because, for instance, if we talk about the energy crisis right now, bringing, say, the energy supply companies into, into public ownership, well, look, that wouldn't do anything in itself to help people with record energy bills. What you need to do is have a windfall tax on the producers of energy because that's where the windfall has accrued to and that's where the benefit could be obtained to support people overall. So I'm afraid circumstances have changed and our fiscal rules that we've got to abide by as an incoming government w would prevent doing everything that we might have initially wanted to do. But we've got to be clear about that and I hope that's clear as to why there's a different position from here today than in the past. Reynolds, what's it mean when a former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, is saying more on this than, than the current Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer? Well, I don't accept that because, as I say, we've been making the case for a windfall tax since January. Um, Keir Starmer is doing uh, some live interviews uh, today. He's in Scotland today. But I would also say that I do welcome very much the intervention from Gordon Brown because, first of all, he was right to recognise the scale of the crisis. That, that, that should be self-evident. But also it was a reminder that in the past this country has had prime ministers who've been able to respond to crises. In Gordon Brown's case, the global financial crisis with the essential action nationally and internationally to respond to that. And that's in stark contrast to where we are today with the government or the potential prime ministers we might get. Frankly, just nothing having, having nothing on the scale that is required. So Gordon Brown was right to say that, but Labour has been making the running on this and we will continue to do so into next week and next month. And just to pick up on your point on the prepayment metres in, in detail, is this now actually up to the energy companies themselves to step up the plate rather than the government? <clears throat> Well, uh, uh, the cap that's in place, there is a higher cap for prepayment customers. Now, uh, what we're proposing by removing that differential is by the money you raised through the windfall tax we would put forward and would backdate to January of this year, we can reimburse suppliers for the cost of that. It's around a cost of £113 million up until March next year. Now, long term, you're right to say we would like to task Ofgem with a remit of removing that, that differential, that, that differential price cap entirely. Highly, but right now, because of the interventions that we put forward, we can say we'd get rid of this straight away, that we could pay for that, that we can recognise and, and, and put forward the costing of that and how the action that would be required and how we would pay for that. So we can do that now in the long term. Yes, I'd like to see that differential removed entirely.